Welcome into a new episode of the Bengals Beat Podcast. I am joined by Bengals cornerbacks coach, Chuck Burks, who I've long wanted to have on the podcast for a while. So thank you for giving me some time today. No problem. No problem. You're in the thick of your training camp schedule, so we really appreciate you giving us some time. But the reason I wanted to have you on is because you have a really interesting room Mm -hmm. right now in terms of... There's a lot of new things going on, not necessarily new players per se, but a battle for a, a starting job and then just the secondary as a whole, it's it's new to some mm-hmm. degree. And I talked to Jordan Kovacs, the safeties coach yesterday, mm-hmm. about like how the group is gelling together. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to start with your group in particular. Mm-hmm. So let's start with how do you feel like the group is performing as a whole through the first block of camp? I think we're headed in the right direction. I think the most thing I'm excited about the group is the versatility throughout the room. Uh, you know, they're, I know the going back and forth with the position battle, who's going to be the starter, who's not, we're going to need everybody. Mm-hmm. It's a passing lead. And, you know, whether you have to cover a tight end, uh, slot receiver, space players, vertical guys, I think we have the versatility and the talent in the room to be able to do that throughout the year. So let's zero in on, on a couple specific guys mm-hmm. so far because you've had the whole off season mm-hmm. to watch some of these guys, whether it be Dak switch to a new position to mm-hmm. see DJ Turner's development, Cam mm-hmm. Taylor Britt. Mm-hmm. So I'll start with Cam Taylor Britt. Obviously, he hasn't been able to practice mm-hmm. um, with his tonsils, but what do you feel like the expectations are for Cam entering this season? You know, the expectation is continuous improvement. So a jump from year one to year two, another jump from year two to year three. Uh, the things that, you know, we got beat on with last year uh, or specifically for a specific person, just learn from, you know, those things and the things that you did well, really capitalize on that and, and improve with that. So that's the only thing I can really ask for with Cam. He's been extremely diligent. Although he's not been practicing, he's uh, been engaged, taking the mental health, uh, mental, mental reps mm-hmm. and helping the guys out, coaching the guys. So this is his third year in the system. He's definitely comfortable. Uh, he has to go out there and get the reps because at the end of the day, you know, football is something that's played in the grass and you, you have to go out there and do it. Specific to Cam, mm-hmm. when do you feel like you saw the light really turn on for you and him in that? he is your number one corner and he can go up against any of the premier wide receivers. Like what moment was it? Was it a moment in practice in a game or was it just like a gradual thing with him? Can Mm -hmm. you just talk to me a little bit about that specific moment? Because I mean, he's more than solidified that role Mm -hmm. for you Mm -hmm. guys. Well, you know, Cam came in extremely eagerly and wanting to be that. Mm -hmm. So he, he believed from day one, he could be that. Mm -hmm. And we played uh, Cleveland the second game in 2022, and he made a big play in the red area versus Peoples, Peoples Jones, I believe. And then on fourth down, you know, we had matched him up with Amari Cooper to win the game. And he went out there and he didn't back down and he finished the play. So that was a moment for me where I felt that in a big moment, he rose up to the occasion and he actually liked being in that moment. So later that year when we played the Bills in the playoffs, he actually followed Stephon Diggs. So, uh, again, that was something he was looking looking forward to. He prepared himself for it. And those moments, those matchups, I think that's what Cam really lives for. What about his skill set do you think makes him have the intangibles to Mm -hmm. be a number one Pro Pro Bowl caliber corner? His his greatest skill set is his ball skills. 100%. 100%. Um, you know, I had a chance to work with Xavier Howard. Xavier Howard is obviously known to have great ball skills. I would put him on par with Xavier Howard. Uh, his ball skills are amazing. His, his feel for just the game is uh, really good. And that's something that I think that great corners have to have is a good instincts, ball skills, and just a competitive edge. And he has all three of those traits. And more importantly, he really he really loves it. He works hard at it. Um, he's the type of guy that, you know, I can see that can be a captain for the team. You know, he's, you know, really gra- gradually been improving in that area as well. So uh, definitely see some leadership uh, characteristics, from, characteristics from him as well. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about where he's at. How much do you think that him, and I know practice when you guys get into the season, mm-hmm isn't 
you know, what training camp practices mm -hmm. might be because you have to, you know, kind of lighten the load just mm -hmm. to make sure the guys get to Sunday or Monday. But do you feel like not every top corner goes up against a Jamar Chase? Obviously, every team has a number one corner. Mm -hmm. But not every team has a Jamar Chase, three-time Pro Bowler, top two or three mm -hmm. receiver. How much do you feel like him going up against him when you guys do ones versus ones mm -hmm. has escalated his growth into being able to cover mm -hmm. your top guys in, in some of those playoff games or in some of those really important matchups? Oh, 100%. I, I think that's played a major factor in it. And one thing that I appreciate about Jamar and T. Higgins uh, even Trent Irwin that, you know, after they go and they have a rep together, they're always talking about, uh, OK, this is what I was trying to do. This is what I was trying to set you up. So they have helped uh, tremendously with Cam's development. Uh, it's been something that, you know, like you just said, I don't think a lot of corners around the league are exposed to not only Jamar Chase, not only T. Higgins, uh, but you have a guy like Trent Irwin, who to me, Trent Irwin, was, I'll put him up there, some of the best route runners in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, he can he can get in and out of his breaks. He can run the ro entire route tree. Uh, but definitely having Jamar, and that's a – every time they line up, it's a marquee matchup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the way those guys see it. So uh, it's been a great – it's been great great exposure for Cam, especially early on. So with Cam, you know, I thought the most interesting thing you just said was that he could potentially be a captain, mm -hmm. which is really interesting because he's in, entering his third year. Mm -hmm. But when you look at kind of – just the change sure. in the secondary. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Mike Hilton's still your mm -hmm. vet there 1, that was a yeah. captain last year, mm -hmm. but he's entering the last year of his deal, mm -hmm. and you know, you never know what's going to happen in the future with him, but it, it's it happened fast for Cam to yeah. take on that leadership role yeah. and become pretty much the face mm -hmm. of the secondary. Has it felt like that to you? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, 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 been, it's been quite the journey. Um, definitely when Cam, Cam came back for his second year, I had definitely noticed a change in his day-to-day -day approach. And Like, give me an example. Just the details, mm -hmm. you know, just the details and everything that he, everything that he does from his note-taking um, to the questions that he asks in meetings uh, to the way that, you know, when he's sitting and he's looking at you when you're talking, um, how, you know, how intentional he is of just about everything that that was a big jump and you know everybody saw it you know I remember Mike Hilton saying man Cam's different you know by, by the way he was doing his drill work yeah. on the field so that was really good to see and you know I feel like he's you know kept that momentum going and when he speaks when he's in the locker room or you know really in the meeting room he speaks people listen he's a very passionate guy He's a very likable guy. He's a guy that's easy to get behind him because you know that 29 is going to lay out his guts on the line every Sunday and at practice. So it's an easy guy to get behind. Before I ask you about some other guys, mm -hmm. to wrap it up with Cam, tell me something and our listeners, something interesting about Cam Taylor Britt that only someone who spends as much time with him <laughs> as you do would know. Uh, Does it have to be football related? Yeah. <laughs> I would, you know, me and Cam is, I don't want to, maybe I'm letting the cat out the bag, but me and Cam talked about one day he's going to have a uh, podcast called The Juice Lounge, you know. Are we breaking news here, <laughs> yeah, Chuck? We're breaking I don't, news. I don't know. I don't know if he want, want me to say that, but, you know, I, I, again, I think Cam just has one of those electric personalities that uh, his career after football is going to be in front of a TV doing something. Well, I so. did a podcast with yeah. Mike Hilton, and mm -hmm. that was great. Yeah. So maybe Cam will Cam, be my no. next co-host. He, he would definitely be <laughs> open and willing to do that. Well, he's already yeah. become a, a media favorite in terms exactly. of just his accessibility. And sure. when you talk to him, mm -hmm. you know, he's not just checking the box. Yeah. He, he genuinely makes you feel like he cares about mm -hmm. giving you a good yeah. interview. Yeah. Um, so that's all great stuff. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing him get back on the field. Yeah, it sounds like Zach Taylor said, you know, it should it should be soon. Mm -hmm. So um, let's switch gears to two guys that I really want to talk to you about. DJ Turner and Dax Hill. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that battle for the number two cornerback position is one of the more intriguing competitive battles this team has right mm -hmm. now. And I know as a coach, you look at it as we're going to need all of them. Mm -hmm. So 
let's just start with what have you thought about those two guys going and competing for that job, looking at it from a sample size of starting in early May when you started doing your OTAs Mm -hmm. to now? You know, the the competition, uh, we always talk about competition in our room. The competition is between yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a healthy competition because there's a lot of talent in that room, but guys are pushing themselves and guys are uplifting and pushing each other. You know, it's an extremely healthy competition. So uh, I would say first and foremost with Dax, a guy that switched position from safety to corner, I've been impressed with, you know, how much he's grasped and there's been a lot of strides in his progression that he's taken and he puts a lot of work into it. You know, he, me and him in the spring, we met, a uh, little bit more every day after okay. practice, you know, just going over the finite details of the position and, you know, getting him back to doing something that he loves doing. You know, in college, he covered well at a high level and he blitzed at a high level, you know, so I Is think. Is that what you would say he loves doing? 100%, covering and blitzing? 100%. And that's something I believe he'll tell you that he that yeah. he likes doing. So, uh, and then with uh, with Drago, it's, you know, it was going, to, going into year two. So the same thing as Cam, it's it's a big jump from year one to year two. And everybody in the room, uh, obviously including those two, are, are all trying to be consistent. What did you call him? Drago. Drago. Is Drago. that what you guys call DJ? Yeah, that's what I call him. Okay. Yeah, Drago. Why? <laughs> that's what he told me to call him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he said. How did you do a double take? I'm like, are we talking about the same yeah, person? Yeah, we yeah, talking yeah. about DJ yeah, Turner? Yeah. Well, before we talk about DJ, I just want to hit a little bit more on Dax because mm-hmm. obviously, you know, him being a first round pick, there's a certain amount of attention and mm-hmm. scrutiny that sometimes comes with that. Yeah. Do you feel like corner is his home in the NFL? 100%. I, well, I, I feel like covering is his home in the NFL. Uh, so, you know, he can cover in the slot. He can cover tight ends. He can cover outside the numbers. He is an, a, a really, really good cover guy. You know, I, I worked with Byron Jones a few years ago in, uh, in Dallas, and he kind of reminds me just from that build mm-hmm. of a Byron Jones, but his blitz ability – his change of direction, his feeling underneath zones uh, are elite, you know. So he, again, he's been doing been doing a good job, and we're looking for him to continue to progress. What for him is the biggest thing he has to overcome from a position switch, like safety to corner? Well, at the cornerback position, you have to have a short memory. Mm-hmm. You know, corners are going to get beat in the NFL, and when you get beat at that position, you're outside the numbers. Everybody in the stands can see that. So. Right. Uh, when that happens, because it will happen, how he responds to that is going to be extremely important to his development as a cornerback. And once we get past that hurdle, then the rest is going to be history. So, so. needless to say, it seems like you, you're you excited. Extremely when, excited. When, I don't know how the conversations went with Zach and Lou mm-hmm. when they came to you and said, we're moving him. Mm-hmm. Because of what you've seen in terms of his ability to cover, Mm -hmm. like you're excited about this for him. Do you feel like he looks at it as an exciting thing for him Mm because it almost opens up another door for him? Yeah, I think he was very excited about the move. I I told told a few people in the building, I felt like we drafted a first-round corner this year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I felt about it, and that's what it feels like. He's been doing a great job, and uh, I have no questions about his production and what kind of year that he's going to have. We just got to continue to progress, improve, and stay consistent. Well, I know you have a meeting, so I'm going to ask you one more question and then mm-hmm. let you go. But let's just talk a little bit more about DJ Turner. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like was the reason for last year during training camp, mm-hmm. he was one of the better players, it mm-hmm. seemed like, on a daily basis in terms of making eye-popping plays. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like happened in terms of why he wasn't as productive later mm-hmm. down the stretch as opposed to the first half of the season? I think uh, it all goes back to consistency. You know, there, I, I can't really point at one particular thing because there were, uh, you know, many things that, you know, when you're playing well, people are still seeing things that they're going to exploit mm-hmm. a month or two from now. Mm-hmm. So as a professional, um, as a growing player in the league, you always want to stay grounded that regardless if you're playing bad, uh, regardless if you're playing well, you just have to really hone in on the details. So I think that was a lesson learned really for everybody, uh, particularly him. Obviously, you know, you don't never want to go up and down. You just want to stay consistent. So that's something that we've talked about. Um, and that's something that, you know, really we think we've emphasized from a mindset standpoint going into this year. 
you just talked about Dax, his home being his ability to blitz and, and cover. Mm -hmm. What is DJ's special sauce per oh, se? Oh, co coverage. Okay. DJ, you can wake DJ up at, you know, 5.30 a.m. and go cover somebody. And he can <laughs> Have run. you ever tried? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've texted him pretty early, but we didn't go get in the grass. But, no, I, I think uh, DJ is a guy who can wake up and cover. He's competitive. He's confident. He has the tools uh, of what you need to play in the NFL at a high level at that position. So everybody in that room, we just have to go and do it. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining me. All Five right. minutes to spare before you. Okay. <laughs> thank you.